am terrific. Hey, before we go any, any farther, okay. the NBC 30 Rock Orchestra. I caught wind of it. Didn't get an invite. I know, wait. I just, I don't want to embarrass you in front of you. Wait, wait, no, we have a plan. We, Jason, we have a plan, right? Lester, I was at, I was at 626 number calling you every day. Are you, are you yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> um, sorry. I thought no, it was a robocall. No, we, we have something better for you. Uh, wait for it. We're gonna do rhythm and news. How about having all the news anchors and news people come in and have a, a sit in with the band? I love that. Yeah. yeah. Because we've got a lot of, you know, a lot There's of news so people. There's so much talent. There's yeah. a lot of talent in this show. That's a great idea. Okay. And it's a You're cool idea too, because it's like you, people don't know that side of you necessarily, or other anchors, like they don't know that. So you it's kind of fun. You gotta have a different life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wait, so you got to play bass recently with John Fogarty, right? I did. That was uh, at I, random. Not just play bass, but at Radio City on the stage there. Oh my we're, gosh, we're such his, an iconic one of his building. Yeah. One of one of our, um, our correspondents and producers working on a story about it. He was trying to get back ownership of his music. Yeah. And it came up that he was a nightly news fan that he watched, and he was in the building one day and really wanted to meet me. So they brought him to my office. I said, "You want to jam?" <laughs> Handed him a guitar. I keep a bass in my office. And we of course, started... you keep a bass in your well, office. Well, You're well, so no. cool. So we yeah. so we were you know, we we're playing some of his hits there, just on the sofa together. And yeah. uh, and I said, "Well, I'll see you at your concert tomorrow night." He goes, "We well, should come up and play." I'm like, "Well, no, I can't do that." But he did it. He called me up uh, and to play "Proud Mary" at the end of the. Oh show. my gosh! Yeah, and to play a... that song in Radio oh, City. Oh my yeah, and it's like you know. Yeah. I love how organic that was too. You know, it was like people call people. You just like it just happened. I love yeah, when it happens like yeah. that. Yeah, and you know, we're sitting there as, as we're talking in, in my office. I mean, I'm you know, at that point, I'm no longer the news guy. Yeah, he's not a rock star. We're just like a couple of musician guys just yeah, talking just and, and, yeah. and making music together. It was awesome. Well, that's the core of it, though, of why we first fell in love with it. That's right. the most important part when you can forget all that part. Exactly. Yeah, and remember how how blessed we are just to have that as an outlet. It's yeah. so cool. Well, you have given many commencement speeches, but what's the best? advice you feel like, because you've given plenty, so what's, what's the best advice that you you think you've received? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a good question. I think it's uh, a long time ago, a, you know, a, a boss was talking to me about my career and said, you have to ready, ready yourself for when doors open. Doors open in life when you least expect them. Yeah. And it certainly happened in my career, and you want to be in a position you're ready. So you know, when I talk to young people, I say, you know, make sure that you're thinking about that next job, and when something is put in front of you, you can say, Hey, I can do that. Yeah. Because I've thought about that. I've worked on those skills before. And yeah. uh, so it's been a hallmark of my career, and it was some great advice, and I like to pass it on to others. Yeah. You Are you going to the Olympics? You've been doing it for like two decades now, right? You're going yeah, to I've been to every Olympics, with the exception of one since 2002. I didn't go to the last the last Beijing Winter Games. But yeah, I, int oh. I intend, yeah, COVID. Yeah. I intend to go to... Uh, to Paris, um, it's, it's really one of the one of the big perks of the job. I love yeah. going to the Olympics. Yeah, you get a great seat. Yeah, yeah you know, for, you know, you do, for you two do. decades. Um, well, besides besides uh, the news, you're, you've been in movies. You were in Thirty Rock. I know. So you like acting as well. Yeah, well, that acting. I've done cameos where they asked me to come on as. You were uh, the fugitive. Uh, I was. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Did you see that? Yes. And somebody reminded me that I was like, "How have I never asked you this before?" And I had the mustache. Yes, right you're almost oh, unrecognizable you gotta... profile right there. Yeah, yeah, that's when I was working at local news in Chicago. Um, they were shooting the fugitive there. The director knew someone at my TV station. This. And he basically said, I want, I want real news people, and I yeah. want them to react to what they know and ask the questions. So we did this scene outside the Hilton Hotel in Chicago. Harrison Ford, um, yeah. you know, the, the fugitive, is, has just been kind of exonerated. They were leading him out of the hotel. And I, I remember at one point, he comes out, and they wanted us to just ad lib. And I said, why did you kill your wife? And he stops. And he turns to me and goes, I didn't kill my wife. And I was like, you weren't supposed to talk to me, sir. I didn't know. <laughs> I, was, I was totally freaked out by it. But the line I did have was, it was again, based on- So you've had a scene with Harrison Ford. That's what I would say to yeah, every dinner party. Yeah, I know. Party. I was, yeah. That was kind of a humble brag. Yeah. Like, yeah. I would say that at every dinner party. Well, this one time, yeah, I was just we hanging doing, out with Harrison Ford. Doing a stuff. film together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't do much of those anymore. But every once in a while, you yeah. know, 30 Rock was, it was a great show. Oh my God, so and, fun. And, and a perfect for you to be on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So how do you feel like nightly news has evolved? over the years with you? You've been doing it for a minute. I've been doing it for a while, but you know, the, the broadcast dates back in, in one form or the other 75 years. So there's a huge legacy of, you know, of, of, of trust and, you know, that we that people have really relied on us. But, you know, we try to make sure we're relevant, that we're covering the stories that people are covering. And like, yeah. we're you know, really into AI stories right now because it's that's cool. such a, it's cool and, and terrifying. It's, and it's, it's terif <laughs> terrifying. I did an interview uh, recently with, the, you know, the head of uh, Microsoft to talk about you know, the concerns about it, but also the promise of it. And so we're exploring topics yeah. like that and really trying to make sure that we continue to be out front and lead. Um, 
you know, really lead the, Before the news Before we're thinking agenda. on that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, you do the nightly news kids edition as well. What's, what's the key to getting kids, like... I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what questions? Have you ever been, have you ever thrown something at that you're like, uh... Well, you know, it's, we, we have to talk, tap go the, the tough subjects sometimes that are in the news because, yeah. you know, kids are watching, they're hearing these things, uh, but we have to do it in a way that's mindful that it's a child or, or yeah. children who are, are watching this. And so we'll really, you know, work with how we present it to make sure we get the salient points but not overwhelm kids. Yeah. And then we always try to uh, make a turn and say, you know, kids... For this particular story, you may want to grab a grown-up or, or a parent to watch with you yeah. to help you know further the discussion. So, and it's it's an area which's important as journalists. You know, we can't shy away from the news. Yeah. But we have to make sure that we, it reaches the audience in, in the best way. It's also important as a parent because I've realized that I have a seven and nine-year-old, and like they ask deep questions. Like you, I mean, you were like, wait, what? Like I wasn't now, do prepared they watch the, for this. Do they watch the news? They will watch with me and they will see stuff and then often ask or hear stuff from like their friends. And, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I didn't realize I'd be having this conversation. And it's like, you don't want to, you don't want, you don't want to lose that innocence, you know, of just being able to be a kid. But at the same time, this is the world you're living in. So you've got to kind of explain it. It's, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to hide away from things. It, and it's hard yeah. to navigate. Like it's hard. Yeah. It's just a difficult subject. Cause you don't, my kids are, I mean, I think we think, oh, kids aren't ready, but Sometimes they are, depending on the kid. Yeah, they surprise you sometimes. And then you don't want them to get information from elsewhere. You're right. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, who knows where that's coming from? You know what I'm saying? So you want to kind of have the conversation with them. But it's hard to have those bigger ones or bigger topics. It like, is, but, but, it, but it's so important because... In the homelessness, world, racism, all those exactly. things. Exactly. Like, yeah, you see those things. They see and it, it and they go, what does this mean? Like, you know, they see rise. They see things like, why is this happening? Or why do they think... They're different, or and you have to explain that to a child, and it's heartbreaking. Yeah, it's hard. So that's when we go through it, but it's but it's a really important part of our job. Yeah, I so think it's we, super we, important. We, we put doing a lot it. of time and attention to it. Yeah, um, or they just ask hard questions sometimes too, and I'm like, I don't know. Let's Google. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ask your mother. Yes, that one, yeah. that one I don't have works. that one. It's only me, Lester. <laughs> so it's me and Google. <laughs> you and Google, I love me that. Me and Google, we're a great relationship. <laughs> um, as, uh, <laughs> so wait, your your grandkids have they ever been on the show? They have, you know, we ask kids and, uh, what do you oh, there's my guys. There's two of them anyway. Um, That's so cute. Yeah, yeah we, in, we ask kids and their parents, if you have a question about anything in the news or, you know, science or whatever, yeah. submit it on video. And the, my, my grandkids have submitted a few. Okay, wait, let's see. I think we have a tape. Hi, my name is Sam and I'm four years old and I want to talk about how wind blows from the air. See, oh. that's a good question, right? That's when I Google. <laughs> that's when you, well, yeah, I would say something like, well, when the planes go by fast, it makes the wind, I don't know. I, right. Yeah, but, but, for, but for that, we bring on you know, one of our meteorologists yeah. uh, who answers the question, and uh, it's been Where a real... Where does uh, wind come from, for those who don't know, I know. But for right. those, well, you and I know, of course. We know. Yeah, but for we those were, who we, don't, did you find out the answer for those people? You and I paid attention in, uh, yeah. in science class. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, we'll have the answer, though, when that airs. Uh, okay, I was <laughs> like, <laughs> you're like, we're waiting. We're working. We have a team of nightly news researchers yeah. working on it. But no, those yeah. are, you know, those are really, really simple but interesting questions. Yeah. And, and so it, that was, uh, by the way, uh, the four-year-old Sam. Oh, so I want to snuggle with Sam so hard. Oh, Look at that smile. He, oh, my gosh. He is a hoot. He's oh a hoot. Oh, my gosh. But, well, yeah. Speaking of family, you're coming up on, is it 42 years of marriage? Yeah, yeah, That's man. incredible. Thank you. That's probably your most accomplished thing. That's so hard to grow together at the same time. Any secrets you um, can share with you the know, class? You know, we always, people ask me the question all the time, laughter. Uh, yeah. you, have, you have to be able to find time to laugh sometimes. I mean, yeah. sometimes in the middle of a, you know, a crisis or something, obviously there's nothing to laugh about. But, but oftentimes, you, you know, time goes by and you're like, remember that time? And... You know, yeah. you were mad at me or whatever it is, and you can laugh. And uh, I, I think it's been a really important part of, of holding us together all these years. I have to ask, 42 years of marriage, you had to have had moments where you had to leave, like, a vacation or a date or something yeah. to go do this something. Yeah, is the, this, is the, this is, you know, if you make a date with me, um, you know, you have to know that I may cancel the uh, yeah. short notice for something. And, uh, yeah, I, I know one time we were on vacation in uh, Barcelona, Spain. We are having a great time. I turn on the TV one morning before we go out for the day, and there was, you know, this massive flood happening. I'm like, what's going on? And well, it was the tsunami and earthquake in Japan, the nuclear disaster. And so, you know, I dutifully called back to New York and I said, I want you guys to know I'm in Europe right now, da-da-da-da. And anyway, they said, we're sending you. 
So I left my wife in Barcelona. So she still has that, that chip Did to she play. laugh? Did she laugh then? No, I, I don't recall a lot of laughter then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe later. Yeah, maybe when later. She's like, remember um, when you left me in but, Barcelona? You know, but, 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 you know, back to, even when we were dating, though, when I was, yeah. we were dating, I was a radio reporter, and I had yeah. been given this car with, you know, two-way radios and police scanners in it and, and yeah. all that. So there were a couple times on dates we would detour to, to a story, and she was all Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah, she was in it. That's kind of hot. You're you know, like, uh, yeah, we're so important yeah, right now. We, we went to a brush fire one time yeah. in, in the Napa Valley. You made it less hot all of a sudden. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I have to know when to shut up. Right? Yeah, okay. like, and then it no, it went back. <laughs> all right, time for a commercial break, everybody. You can see Lester Holt, NBC Nightly News weekdays at 6.30, as well as anchored Dateline Friday nights at 9 on NBC.